Please welcome Developer Programs Engineer Johan Ufrogen. So, Ajime Machete, nice to meet you. I'm Johan Ufrogen, and I will speak about building game using technology, using Google technology. So, about me. So, my name is Johan Ufrogen. Uh, people usually call me Propi. I'm from Google Zurich in Switzerland. I'm a developer program engineer, and I support App Engine developer community. And you can reach me through my Google Plus profile. So um, if you want to follow this presentation and have your laptop, you can open the link on the bottom. So do you remember, how many of you remember Angry Birds from last uh, IO? How many of you have played Angry Birds before? And how many of you are game developers here? OK. So about, uh, about Angry Birds, so it's really leveraged Google Open Technology and Platform. It's deployed on three major platforms that we support. It's deployed on the Chrome Web Store, on Android, even in Google+. And it's built using Google technology. So it's built using, using Google Web Toolkit, for the Chrome uh, for, for the, the um, Chrome Store version, it's hosted on App Engine, and make a lot of use of HTML5. But there is a missing ingredient there. It's built using the Play N library. So what is Play N? It's a cross-platform game library. You write once your game in Java, and you can deliver it on multiple platforms. So you can target desktop Java for development, HTML5 for web app, Android, and Flash. It's free and open source under the Apache license too. Uh, there is a website. Uh, it's, uh, there is a website called developer.google.com where we host uh, all Google-related projects, and you can find more information about Play N there. And one thing interesting to note: it's, it's already used by game studio like Roxio for Angry Birds, but also other game studio which make heavy modification and already have fork on Git, GitHub. So there is a developer called Three Rings which is a, making heavy modification to Play N. So one of the things to note is that Play N try to use acceleration everywhere. So when it's running on Chrome, it targets WebGL. When it's running on Android, it targets GL, ES, and Canvas. When it's running on Safari, it targets CSS3. And even when it's running on IE9, it targets Canva. So for it to work, each platform has to implement the same set of API. So for IO subsystem, each platform has to implement graphics, audio, net, and inputs. So this is already taken care of inside Play N. So you've got graphics implemented for Android, you've got graphics implemented for WebGL, you've got graphics implemented for CSS3, and they all expose the same primitive. And it also provides asset management for each platform. So on each platform, you have a way to get image, sound, and text. And you, you have to implement the game interface. So you define a game by uh, by overriding, the, by implementing this interface and overriding the following function. So you override the init function for making all the initialization of your game. You override the update function to update your game, game logic. You are being passed uh, the delta time, which is uh, the time that elapsed between the last update and now. And you have to implement the pen function to update the object position and update your animation. And you also supply the update rate, which is uh, the rate at which you want the game logic to be called. So for example, if you want your game logic to be called like say 25 times a second, you just return uh, 25 in update rate. So we'll see how we can build a game using Play N now with a little Play N 1.1. So I believe, I don't know if you feel the same way, that every game should start with a blue sky. So for doing that, we implement the interface game. We simply define the size of the screen. We create an image, which will be where we draw the, where we draw the sky. We get a canvas on this image. We set the official blue sky color. 
and we fill, a, uh, and we fill all the image with this color, cause it, or calling the, using the function fill rect. And then we have to create a layer. In play n, in order to display things on the screen, what you do is you create layer. So basically everything is play n that, you, that is ever displayed to the screen is a layer. And in order to put it on the screen, you have to add it to the root layer. So we just call, you, we just get the root layer for the graphics object, and we add the background that we just created to it. And that displays this, which is a blue sky. Well, in order to make things a little bit pretty, prettier, we want to add some cloud uh, inside the, on the blue sky. So we'll just like load an image using the asset manager. So here you see that using get image, we can like load any file that is stored as an asset on each platform. We create an image layer because we want to put it on screen. And we just, like we've done before, we add it to the root layer. We define some position. So ideally we want this cloud to be on the top, top left of the screen and we set the translation, the translation of the, the clue to update its position. And so now it displays a cloud and a blue sky. But this, this is not very fun, so we will animate the cloud a bit. So for that, we will override the pen function, and inside the pen function, we'll be passed the delta, which is uh, the, the time that elapsed between the last call to paint. So we'll just like keep incrementing the, the X position of the cloud, and eventually, if it's go off the screen, we want it to go back on the left. And we just update the translation uh, of the cloud to apply the, the transformation. And so it does this. So now we have a cloud which is moving. And hopefully it should drop. Oh. Ah, he's there again. <laughs> so this is not quite a game yet, because like, it's only, it looks more like a screen server. So we will add some more object into the game. So we will add some ball. So we just, like before for the cloud, we load the image from the asset manager. We create a new layer, which will be a group layer, which will hold all the ball objects. We add the ball layer to the root layer in order to display it. And we get the pointer of the system, which, will like, uh, which we can listen for click events. We override on pointer end, and this function will be called each time we click on the screen. And when we click on the screen, we, lo we just create an image layer based on the image that we have loaded before, and add the ball to the ball layer. So now, when we click on the screen, we see this little guy, <laughs> which are displayed and rotating like crazy. So we want to make more, this uh, a little bit more fun. So we're going to use a library cause, uh, called Box2D, which is a 2D physics engine. And luckily, it has been ported to Java. It's called GBox2D. And because we are using Wit, we are able to use like any Java library, and it will be able to run inside the browser. So first, we initialize the world. So we have to. We have to define, so the world of box d is not operating on the same set of coordinates uh, that, the, that we are drawing things. So we have to define a ratio between the coordinate of the screen and the coordinate of, of box d Then we define the gravity, and we create the new world. And we update the ball layer, so it uses physics coordinate instead of using screen coordinates. No, each time we create a ball, we will initialize some physics. So we create a new body, which will be a dynamic body, which means for the point of view of box d that it will be moving around. We associate a new shape to this body, which will be a circle. We set the radius, we set the density, and the radius combined to the density will, will, will tell box 2 d how EV is, not, uh, is our object and how it's affected by gravity and we just associate the, the shape to the body using create fixture. And now, our little guy are falling over. But this kind of said that they fall uh, out of the screen, so we are gonna add a ground, so they, they are not like going out of the screen. So for that, we will create a simple shape, which will cover all the, all the bottom of the screen. We'll create a polygon shape, and set the screen coordinate to it. 
and we will create a, a new fixture and associate it to the current body. So now, when we click, our little guy is stacking around. Wow! But this is not quite fun yet, so we will add more block. So the first, the first block is for loading an image uh, from, uh, that, that we will display for the block. We will create um, a group layer for holding all the block image. We will set the, uh, the ratio between, um, between the screen. We will affect the same ratio between the screen and the physics coordinates. And we will create the new body. And then, evenly spaced at the bottom of the screen, we will create some block. So we make sure to create a new layer for all general objects. And we create a new polygon shape and define uh, the collision around the block. So we set a shape which is a box associated to the block and we add it to the block body. So now we are some block. And our little guy is stacking it. Hey! Woo! So now we will add some nails for like uh, for s to make this a bit more interesting. So all over the screen, we are going to draw some nails, which will be little circle that where where the um, the ball are colli colliding with. So we de we define uh, we will draw the 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 nail using um, the same canvas that we use it to draw the background with. We will associate a, a new shape, which will be uh, a simple circle. Uh, with a little radius, and we, de we define also some restitution. So when a ball hits the shape, it will bounce around between. So now we have like a patching ball game. But this is not quite a game yet because there is no scores. So what we are doing, so remember, we have these little slots on the bottom. So on, on each slot, we will, we will associate a number of points. So on the left and right uh, end, it will minus our score. Then it will give us plus 10, and if we manage to hit the middle, it will go, give us plus 50. So in order to do that, because this is basically our game logic, we will override the update function. So inside the update function, we scan all the ball objects, and for all the ball objects, we get their we get their current position, their current y position. And if it's below uh, the screen, so if it's uh, on the same uh, level as the as the block, we will increment the score based on the horizontal position of the ball. So we just look up in the point table uh, given the slots that we are in. We make sure, uh, using max, that our score don't go below zero. And we remove the ball on this score because we don't want ball to stack around like this. So we remove the ball to the layer, we remove the ball from the uh, physics world, and we also remove the entity. We add the entity to a remove ball list that will be, will be cleaning layer. So now we have a score on the top left, and hopefully, when the ball reach, oh, this is no way. The score keeps being zero. But like, if I go back here, this thing around. So there is something weird. So let's see how we draw, we draw this score. So we are using, uh, we are creating a new image. Like we've seen before, we are creating an image layer. Just like we are doing for the screen. And in order to paint, we are using the canvas. So we. On the image, we get the Canva, we clear it, because we don't want the, uh, the text to, to stack on each other, and we set the fill color. But nothing in wrong with that code, I wonder why it's not working. Maybe there is a bug in Play N. So let's see how it works with Java. Do we have the same bug or not? So here we have the score. So this is a Java native application. It's the same code. It's running, no using Java. And it keeps implementing. So 
saying something weird because it's, really, it's, it's working in Java, but it's not working in HTML. So there is definitely a good gameplay N. And since we are good open source citizens, we will report it. So let's get the code over there. So what is the problem? Canva draw text not what refreshing on HTML backend. We'll provide the code in order to, for them to reproduce the issue. What is the expected output? Output. Uh, Canva should refresh an HTML backend. What do you see instead? Uh, Canva refresh only on Java backend. What version I'm using? I'm using GTA Trunk uh, on Mac OS X. Leopard, and provide any information below. Oh, this is a live bug report from GDG 2009 <laughs> Tokyo. <laughs> Way. <laughs> So yeah, there was a bug in, in Canva draw text, and we feel better because we contributed to the project. So, but we still want to display our score. So we'll, for that, we'll go like old school and use a bitmap font and do spriting. So instead of drawing the text using the draw text API, we just use an image and draw the each digit separately. So for that, we just load the image by, like before. We get the asset manager, we get the image, we add it to the root layer. And in updates now, we have a new layer which will display uh, all the digits of the score. We convert the digit to a string. And we create a new layer for each digit. And now we look up inside the image, the position corresponding to the, to the current character. So we take the character, we try to find out um, an index between one and nine, and we just blitz one character by each on each, uh, each separated by uh, 16 coordinate unit. And we set the translation, and then we go to the next digit. So now, on the top left, we have, a we have the score. And hopefully, ah, it works now. And plus, this looks better, because this looks like old school Atari font. So, I have some homeworks for you. So what you could do is like improve this demonstration in order like to put the score on App Engine using the net sub module. You can also make it pretty because like this doesn't look quite good. Like on the bottom, I rather see some kind of animated sprite. You can also add the current playing uh, player thumbnail using the Google Plus API. So. I will ask you, like, to, if you have some spare time, to download PlayN and to go for my messy code. So using this command, you will be able to get the code, look at how bad it is, and try to improve it. So there is one more thing. So switch. So this is also working on Android. So, same code. <laughs> so, using Plain, we were, we were able to deploy the same code, the same Java code, and to compile it to HTML5, Android, and native Java for development. So, if you were following this presentation, you can get the APK and play yourself with the game. So, this is me, Johan Frozin. Thank you for attending. And I, Please have a look at developer.google.com slash pm. Um, let's meet in the office hour outside if you have some question. So thank you a lot. Thank you.